Today we're going to take a trip back to the 18th century. I'm here with Chef Walter Stabe from the historical City Tavern in Old City, Philadelphia. Chef Stabe, thank you so much for being with us today. It's a My pleasure. pleasure. Equally. What are we going to be making today? We're playing tribute to the 18th century with fried oysters, which are very plentiful. Actually, oysters, there were so much oysters eaten in Philadelphia that the streets were paved with the shells of the oysters, believe it or not. That's great. Benjamin Franklin's favorite dish. And then we're going to do a pork medallion that is marinated in two different ales. It's easy in our days because you can buy any fishmonger, any supermarket, you can get oysters already shocked. Right. It's so simple. The only thing you've got to do is you want to make sure that you buy very, very, very fine cornmeal. So a little AP flour, you want to, you want to coat them really good, then just in an egg wash, and then in the cornmeal. And cornmeal. It's totally I fine love cornmeal. cornmeal. So you want to make me one or two of those, just of like that? Next is the pork tenderloin. If you want to make this at home and you want to make this, you've got to make sure you go find Hetfield. Hetfield's tenderloins are the best that money can buy. Listen to those oysters sizzle. They're liking it. And then all you can, what's nice about a tenderloin, you have no waste. Even the end you can take. You take, if a tenderloin is home like this, you take the end, look here. Just go like that. Now do you use Hatfield products in your restaurant? All the time. That's great. And Hatfield is a it's local Pennsylvania company as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. But look at that. So you go like so, see, let me, see me, watch me. So simple, look at that. How much simple does it get? Just like that. How nice they cook up, isn't it gorgeous? I'm gonna keep this out for a second. And all I wanna do in the hot pan is put some uh, butter. I have the, uh, the tenderloin already here that I told you, pre-marinated. You can smell the beer, smell the ale. Oh, see? you sure can. Comes really good. Mm -hmm. I like it just natural because mm -hmm. I have a very good demi, a good brown sauce. If you don't have a good brown sauce, then maybe do it coated. What happens is the flavor of the beer is so unique because uh, it has, uh, Alberta spruce and the fermentation. Oh, okay. So the Alberta spruce, smell it. You can smell it. And if you, oh, wow. and if, and if you marinate your pork tenderloin in there, what happens is the flavor comes on it. See that? Very rich, yeah. yeah. So now, get a little, glaze it on both sides a little bit. I don't, I don't want any much color on this one over here. So not too much color. No, no, you it's different. It's like what we white. call it actually in your poilé. If you want to be fancy, you want to deglaze it, it works extremely well. Love that. A little deglaze is good for that. And then you throw a little bit of beer I just gave you. Put it in there. Now you see what I have in there? Mustard greens. Mustard greens. Again, something forgotten half the time. So many people don't understand it. It's beautiful. It has a lot of flavor to it. Potatoes, I'm going to smash them quick. Okay. Because uh, there's nothing better than freshly made uh, potatoes. Those look wonderfully right, crispy. Put a few more. So the mashed potato is just used as a, as a base, as you can see. See that? Now I'm taking this, I'm going to my pot. I'm getting the pork tenderloin out. Put the pork tenderloin on top. And now I'm just gonna get the, the wilted, but not cooked to dead mustard greens Beautiful. on top. What a nice presentation with the height. Well, it's good eating too. This is really what I like about of it. Course. The flavors. The flavors come right out of it, so it's beautiful. Little extra sauce over the top, never That's hurts. It. And then we do a little bit, just sprinkle a little bit of parsley in this, play it and it's like a so on here. You want to take this to the table while I finish to. the oysters? That looks like a meal fit for any 18th century nobility. <laughs> Chef right. Dave, this is a fantastic spread you've made us here. Let's dig well, in. Dig in here and make sure you put the Do you mind if I use my fingers? I'm just going to get right in there. You should, and then stick it in here, seriously, do it like so. Looks like a delicious rum alive. Oh, mm. put the doctor now. That is right on. Mmm, beautiful. And then the pork. Let's try the pork. Try that. I'm gonna cut your piece here. Mmm, there's mustard greens. Yeah. Love a little bitter green to go on top. See how nice the tenderloin is? Look at that. See, Very, it's just, so moist. And it's just cooked right. Look at that. Look at that. See, moist. Yum. A little green on top here. And a little yeah, mustard yeah. green. Here we go. Get a little, little bit in each bite. Mmm. Mmm. That is fantastic, Chef. Simple, elegant, 
from the farm to the table. Not overworked. You see how the natural fit? But most importantly, it's delicious. But do you see how those herbs come out of there mm -hmm. without a lot of work? They really do. You can absolutely taste the herbs in that sauce. So three-time Emmy Award winning chef. Thank to you. It's been Fantastic. a pleasure to have you today. My pleasure Cheers. Too. To see today's recipe and all of the recipes featured on the Chef's Kitchen, log on to chefskitchen.tv.